Hi, this is Todd with Land of Math. Nothing confuses kids more than trying to understand how it's possible that you can multiply two numbers together and get a product, the answer, that's actually less. So in this video, we're gonna have a couple examples of that, and we're also gonna model it to kind of help show or explain why this is possible. So all that's coming up next on the Land of Math. So how is it possible that I can multiply a number and get an answer, a product, that's actually less? So for example, here I'm multiplying 15, and when I do, I end up getting the answer 3. Or I'm multiplying 25, and my product is actually going to be 2.5. Here I'm multiplying 20, and my answer is only 10. Or 60, and I'm multiplying it, and I get 24. So let's model how this is even possible. So let's say I'm taking the number 10. So we'll take the number 10, and we're going to multiply by 0 0.10, or 10 hundredths. When I do that, and we'll use our handy dandy calculator here, when we multiply this, we actually find out that the answer is just plain old one. And so one is definitely a lot less than 10. So how can we kind of imagine this? Well, for the 0.10 or the 10 hundredths, we're gonna think of it as a dime. So we would have 10 dimes. And if we have 10 dimes, 10 dimes would equal $1. It makes a lot more sense if you switch the order of the 10 and the 0 0.10, where it's 0 0.10 times 10. So we're taking a small number and making it bigger. So this is an example of the commutative property. It allows us to switch the order we multiply. So let's look at 25 times 0 0.10. So very similar. Um, we'll go ahead and multiply it again with our calculator just to check our work. So if we take 25 and we multiply it by the 0 0.1 or 0 0.10, we get 2.5, which is definitely a lot smaller than 25. And it's the same thing. If, we're, if we model with a dime, we would have a total of 25 dimes. If I would take the 25 dimes and I start to break it up like into dollars, you can see on the left over here, we have 10 dimes, which would be a dollar. Here's another 10 dimes, which would be another dollar, and I have 50 cents left over. And again, it makes a lot more sense if you think of it as 0 0.10 times 25. Anytime you can take a smaller number and multiply by a larger number, it seems to make more sense. So here's a couple other examples. So if we're taking 15 times 0 0.05, we're going to multiply, and we're going to get an answer that's definitely less than 15. Matter of fact, it's even less than 1. It's going to be 0.75. The 0 0.05, it would be like saying we're multiplying by a nickel. And again, it makes more sense if you switch the order. But if we want to model this, it would be like saying we have 15 nickels. So if I have 15 nickels, that would be 10 cents, 20, 30, 40, 50, or well, there's 60, 70, and of course there's our five. So if we take seven, here's another example, seven times 0.25, and we go ahead and multiply that out, again, you're gonna see an answer is gonna be less than seven. And so in this case, it's 1.75. And again, using money here kind of as our theme, the 0.25 would be like saying a quarter, and you can say it would have a dollar and 75 cents. Okay, we can model this with fractions as well. So if I take 10 times one half, my answer is going to end up being five. And so let's show how that's even possible. So the 10 times one half is five. So what that's kind of like saying is we would have 10 one halves. And you can see if I have 10 one halves, it would actually form a total of five whole. Okay, let's do one more example with the fractions here. So let's say we're taking eight times one fourth. So again, with the handy dandy calculator, we'll go ahead and take eight times one fourth. And when I do that, we get two, which of course, that's less than eight. And if we're multiplying that, it's like saying we're having eight one fourths. So you can see here, four of the one fourths would equal one whole. So if we have another four fourths, that would equal another whole. So there's a total of two circles there. The bottom line, when you multiply a positive number by a positive number that is less than one, like a fraction or decimal, the product will be less. Or we could use the commutative property and reverse the order of the numbers we're multiplying. So you're making a smaller number, a larger number, which might be easier to help make sense of it all. So hopefully this video is helpful. We'd love it if you give it a thumbs up. We'd love if you'd subscribe to the channel. Until next time, we'll see you next on The Land of Math.